This broadcast is brought to you by Law School Transparency. Our mission is to make entry to the legal profession more transparent, affordable, and fair. Hey listeners, welcome to I Am The Law, a show that profiles new and seasoned law school graduates in different jobs. I'm Kyle McEntee, the Executive Director of Law School Transparency. Over the past few years, my organization has worked hard to put statistics, from employment data to debt projections, into the hands of tens of thousands of prospective law students. But what about the qualitative side? Practicing law is about much more than what you can glean from data, or TV shows, or news articles. I'm the Law is a weekly podcast series that profiles law school graduates. My team will produce informational interviews to shed light on what their jobs are really like. We'll profile people from all over the United States and many types of jobs for different kinds of employers of different sizes and serving different purposes. Suits is a great television show, but Harvey and Mike don't lead typical lawyer lives. Law and Order, Boston Legal, LA Law, and The Good Wife likewise fail to paint a realistic portrait. These works of fiction compromise the collective understanding of the legal profession. This leads to unmet expectations, genuine disappointment, and even resentment from those individuals who join the profession with misimpressions. A study by the ABA found that job dissatisfaction among lawyers is widespread, profound, and growing worse. Surveys vary in the percentage of lawyers who report they would do it all again, but they tend to put the number between 30 and 50 percent. Studies also find elevated, even alarming, rates of depression and other emotional impairments. Now, it's not clear whether unhealthy people are attracted to the law or whether the practice of law makes people more unhealthy. We likewise don't know whether being more informed will make a substantial difference in how happy, healthy, or ethical lawyers are. But we are confident that our efforts to help people better understand what lawyers do is a step in the right direction. Even to those of us in it, the legal profession is a bit of a black box. I Am The Law is a forum that will transform how people understand important aspects of the profession, as well as transform how people make informed decisions about joining it. Debbie Merritt, one of our hosts for I Am The Law, jumped at the opportunity to help more students pursue careers based on facts rather than fictions. I'm Debbie Merritt, a professor of law at The Ohio State University's Moritz College of Law. She's also a former Supreme Court clerk for Justice O'Connor and teaches a criminal defense clinic in addition to traditional courses. Law is multidimensional. There are many jobs that satisfy some people, but not other people. There are jobs that many people find boring but a few people like very much. Uh, There are jobs that a lot of people like, uh, but that are hard to get. And there's a great variety as well in the lifestyle, pay, and benefits in legal jobs. Many potential lawyers don't understand those differences. So what I like about this series is that it's really going to show people the many different types of work that law graduates can do, as well as some of the pluses and minuses of those jobs because we're all different, and people should be able to choose in the end what they would like to do. People also change as they go through law school. I hope that this series will be useful to students who are in law school who may have come thinking about one type of job, but realize that it's not what they really find most suitable to themselves. And by listening to this series, they may find that there's something else that they really would love to do. You may never have heard of the work of an immigration attorney or a writs attorney or a workers' compensation attorney, and these may be jobs that you would find very appealing. The profession struggles to tell prospective members about the jobs we do. I Am The Law creates an engaging experience, one that captures the attention of busy students, and really illustrates practice. One of our hosts spent years at law schools trying to provide useful programming, but never quite got there. I'm Mike Spivey. I'm the founding partner of Spivey Consulting, which does law school admissions consulting. Mike is also on LST's board of directors. Prior to consulting, Mike was associate director of admissions at Vanderbilt, dean of career services at Washington University in St. Louis, and also an assistant dean at Colorado Law. As you might imagine, Mike spent a lot of time hurting students into various programs. Think of the typical law school schedule. You're in class all day, and you get bombarded by this flash email message from your career services office that at 7 o'clock p.m. sharp, there'll be five different lawyers from five different cities answering your questions. No matter how valuable these in-person events can be, they're severely limited by whether a student can show up. Compare this to an on-demand podcast. When you're ready to listen, you listen. When you need a break, you take a break. 
You could replay it, and you could take it with you. And you go to this event at 7. Well, what happens? There's a lot of things that happen, and a lot of them aren't great. To begin with, you have five people. They're being asked questions based on what they say versus pre-thought, mindful, purposeful, probing questions. At best, it scratches the surface. So that's the first problem. The second problem, which is something that I noticed early on in my career, and this <laughs> is a huge personal pet peeve of mine, is when you have five panelists, everyone will answer the same question. You would get a lot of repetition. When we surveyed students, we'd hear that. So it turned out that these events were often less useful in practice than in theory. Compare Mike's experience to what we do. We edit lengthy content down to the core, which we then deliver to your inbox every Monday morning. If the product isn't worth listening to, we can leave it on the cutting room floor. Our time is wasted behind the scenes, not yours. Here's Mike again. We're actually talking about what someone in a small law firm does on a day-to-day. How does he collect a bill? How does he find clients? You never hear that in law school. You never hear about building a book. In fact, I, I bet you if you said that to a first year, they might not even know what you're talking about. One of the things I wish we had done better is really reached out to people in every different legal practice arena. If I were a dean of career services today, I would make these podcasts available to my students, not just so that they know what's out there, but also so they know what sort of questions to ask and what to demand of their legal education. His point about knowing what to ask is pertinent. We advise all pre-law students to meet as many lawyers as possible. In the process, we want them to ask questions that produce useful information. It turns out that this is hard to do. It also presupposes that they know many or any lawyers. You can also only physically arrange so many informational meetings. A student who listens to I Am The Law won't face these problems. You don't need to know lawyers to learn about what many different lawyers do. And, as Mike points out, our questions provoke thoughtful, revealing answers that go beyond the surface responses we may expect a typical college student to receive. This produces quality content now, and more meaningful meetings later. I don't think the access factor can be understated. I grew up in a middle-class family, but did not talk to lawyers before deciding to attend law school. I talked to my college professors and pre-law advisor, but because I didn't know more than one or two lawyers, I didn't have anybody tell me what I didn't know. I lucked into my satisfying job. My friend Allie Gerkman had similar luck. My name is Allie Gerkman. I'm the Director of Educating Tomorrow's Lawyers at IELTS, the Institute for the Advancement of the American Legal System at the University of Denver. Neither of us want others to simply fall into satisfying or unsatisfying careers. As a person who came from a family that didn't know many or perhaps any lawyers, I think that a show that introduces me to a variety of lawyers who are practicing law in a variety of ways would have been incredibly useful as a prospective student and as a law student making decisions about my career. In-person informational interviews are essential but it's important to recognize that not everyone has the opportunity to learn from practicing lawyers. I recently had a conversation with Josh Zaslowski, a prospective law student who has had the opportunity to meet several local lawyers. Josh is currently working full-time and applying to law schools. Here's an excerpt from our conversation. If you were to try and figure out what lawyers actually did, what, what would you do? Well, I guess aside from working or interning at a firm, just talking to local attorneys. And I have had the opportunity to talk to some, which does give you a better idea. And going through the law school process, when you have the opportunity to interview with alumni of that school, I think that's really nice. And it's, it's helpful to talk to people and figure out exactly what they do. What kind of questions do you ask them when you're talking to them? I usually ask, you know, if it was what they expected what their work is like, if they enjoy what they do, and just try to get a sense of what it is, you know, attorneys actually do. When you're talking to these attorneys, do you feel like you ever really scratch the surface? (laughs) Um, To be honest, not really. And does that make it difficult to learn about the profession? Oh, yeah, I I think it does. And um, I think what also makes it difficult is, you know, you kind of see um, things on the media and the legal life looks pretty glamorous when you see things like that. I think you get an idea of what it's like from that. And then it's when you talk to people, it's not at all like that. So basically your instinct says, I know what I see on TV is not real, but I still don't know what's real. Exactly. But Josh raises another salient point. When he does an informational interview, more pressing considerations point to how deep he'll probe. I mean, when you're doing an interview, 
I mean, to be honest, what I'm trying to do, I mean, I'm trying to come off as professional and as appealing to them so that when they write to the admissions officers, you know, they say that he was a, you know, a good candidate. My goal isn't really, I mean, maybe it's like a secondary goal, but my primary goal is not to learn about what it is that they do exactly. It's to do well in the interview. I mean, to ask thought provoking questions, yes, but it's a totally different idea if I was having a conversation that was solely to pick someone's brain about what they actually do as an attorney. After our interview concluded, Josh threw in how he thought I Am The Law could change people's undergraduate experience. To actually have an idea of what these people are doing, I mean, I can't imagine if, if I had this information when you started undergrad, I think for a lot of people, it would change what they end up doing or they would come in with a very different mindset. In other words, students would spend their time doing different things during undergrad if they could better articulate their career ambitions. Providing useful information that people can act on is central to LST's purpose. We put information into the hands of students so they can make better choices. These better choices pay dividends to those students, of course, but also to their friends and family, the legal profession, clients, and our broader society. After all, no one exists in a vacuum. When we help one, we help many. Join us on January 19th for our first episode. We'll interview Gabriel Chung, a family law attorney in Boston, Massachusetts. I Am The Law is produced by Law School Transparency for LST Radio. If you want to hear more, you can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes or go to lstradio.com.